Hello sports fans and welcome to the week three edition of the Eastland County Today Coaches Show. Week two of Eastland County football is done. Let's recap shortly, shall we? A great game in Cisco saw the Lobos fall to the Wall Hawks. A marathon of a game in Clyde was finally won by the Mavericks on an interception of a two-point conversion late, in, well, in triple overtime. It was late in the night when the Mavericks won. Gorman made it two straight in six-man football, while Ranger and Rising Star had rough nights on the gridiron. Let's get right to it, shall we? The Cisco Lobos lost a heartbreaker to the Wallhawks 34-27 in Cisco's home opener. Zane Wright rushed for 130 yards, while Case Gale helped with 92 yards on the ground. Let's see what Coach West has to say about the loss to Wall. Coach West, thanks for your time this Labor Day. Uh, let's talk about Wall a little bit from Friday night. Uh, you, uh, We knew that it was going to be a good game, good game last year, another good game this year. Uh, funny how turnovers played a part last year, plays a part this year. Uh, give, us your, uh, you, give us your impressions, Coach. I was very pleased, and you're right. You know, the year before, if it wasn't for a couple of turnovers, we'd have never beat them in Wall, Texas, and that's that's usually the case when you're trying to beat a team that doesn't lose too many. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit of help, and they got the help uh, Friday night. And we turned the ball over in some at some bad times in the fourth. You know, with an opportunity to to go and score and possibly tie up or win the game. But that's that's what happens in big contests when you're playing good people. And man, they were a touchdown waiting to happen with the speed that they had. Uh, very hard to contain the, the, the many things that they were doing to us. And for the most part, we contained it, but then the big play hurt us. So defensively, it was what Coach Brunson was probably most disappointed about was the 40-yard touchdown play. That didn't happen very often in our scheme, and we've got to get that fixed. But uh, I thought we played great other than the big plays defensively. We knew what to do. We just couldn't always make the play. And on the other end of the ball, offensively, I felt like we did a great job of controlling, controlling the line of scrimmage and not just doing that, but doing it with a, a 5'9", 175-pound guard on a 6'4", 265-pound defensive tackle. And our kids got after them and blocked them well. We graded out well up front. We weren't as explosive as Wall was, but we could kind of get down the field in our scheme and for the most part, get, we could go get four yards when we needed to. The third and eights and the third and longs have been a problem. It's going to be a problem for this team of getting out of that, so we can't be in too many of those situations. <laughs> Coach, you, you mentioned your defense uh, late in the game. Uh, other than the one big play early in the fourth quarter, your defense really seemed to step up, uh, giving your offense an opportunity, uh, had the field goal bounce off the uh, the pole there. Uh, your defense really seemed to step up late. They did, and, and when we needed them to, with an opportunity to win, and if they hadn't have got those two stops there at the end, you know, it would have been a two or three touchdown game. So they got to stop and gave us a chance at least to go win the game, and that's all we can ask of them. Yes, sir. All right, let's look towards this Friday evening. Uh, the Lobos travel to Comanche take on the Indians. Uh, you've had a little bit of time to, to look at what the Indians do. What kind of challenges do the Indians uh, provide the Lobos this Friday evening? Probably the biggest challenge that we're looking at is just a huge size difference. They're, they're even bigger than Wall up mm. front. Uh, one of their smallest linemen is around the 245-pound mm. range, and they, they range from the 260s to the 275s, and they are immense up front. Those same kids are playing defense in a rotation. They're very well. Coach Hernsmeyer does a great job with them. He's got some great offensive line to run behind, and he does a real good job of milking the clock, running his scheme. Quarterback is a three-year starter at safety. This is his first year at quarterback. But he is very well executing his offense, and he does a great job of throwing the ball down the field. And that's, that's something that uh, – you know, they, they were a little iffy with maybe in past years, but he's done a great job of, of executing that scheme and 
Uh, it's, it's, it, they're not a team that you can always pile in. You're going to have to pile in there to stop the run, but you have to be a little careful that they do a good job of play action pass. Comanche always seems to be a tough place to play as well. I can remember in years they, past that it's just been really tough to play there. Well, we watched that 2013 game. Of course, that group won a state championship, and we went to Comanche and struggled. I mean, it, it, we had a few big plays that, that finally broke it wide open, but we struggled, and they did a great job of scheming us, and we ha had difficulty moving the football. We had some turnovers that went with that. They could go get their four yards when they wanted to and put some long drives together, and it shortened the game up. But we really struggled uh, uh, in Comanche, and that, that is a difficult place to play. And we better get up this week. This is, a, this is not your – Average football team, they, they beat Toler pretty good the week before, 31-14. to 14, And last year, Toler whipped them pretty good. So we're assuming we've got a great football team on our hands on Friday. Thanks, Coach West. The Lobos will take on the Comanche Indians in Comanche this Friday evening at 7.30. The Eastland Mavericks survived three overtime periods to overcome the Clyde Bulldogs in Clyde 64-62. Josh Gosnell threw for 330 yards, and Brent Bailey caught five of his passes for 101 yards. Let's see what Coach Watkins has to say. All right, Coach Watkins, thanks for taking your time out of this Labor Day holiday to spend with us. First, let's talk about the thriller in Clyde. Uh, you, you guys, every time you guys get together, it seems like it goes down to the wire. Last year, I believe it was like the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, when you finally pulled away from Clyde. And, 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 and this, this week, it's a game that just wouldn't end until uh, Heinzman there stepped in front of that two-point conversion. Uh, give us your impress, impressions of how the Mavericks played Friday evening. Uh, we saw a lot of good things, and then we also saw a lot of things we got to fix. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, we hit, we got tired. Obviously, uh, it was a long game. Um, I think there was over 200 plays in the game, and that's uh, that's almost equivalent of two games. Yeah. And uh, but saw a lot of things. We get we got to tackle better and uh, and, and get to the ball. Uh, on the run a little better, obviously, and we'll work on that, and we'll, and we'll get that fixed. Uh, but saw saw a lot of guys step up and make plays when they had to make plays and, and just kept fighting and finding a way to win. Josh Gosnell seemed to have another good uh, evening passing the ball. Tell us about your senior quarterback. Oh, he, he's a great leader, and, uh, you know, he – we turned the ball over a couple times, and that's what uh, kept the game close. And we—that's what we got to get rid of. He can't do. Other than that, uh, he, he's a competitor, and he—he he knows he wants the ball in his hands when it's when it's that time. And uh, you know, he, he had a great night and had a lot of guys around him help in that great night. Um, it, offensive line had another good night. Seems uh, as I as I look at the stats, Stacy and uh, Bailey uh, had a good good games receiving the ball as well. Yes. Uh, Derek, you know, he came up with some big catches. We had third and 13 in the third overtime, and we have to go make a play, and he, he has a 15-yard catch, uh, which was big to, to help us continue that drive. Um, Bailey, Bailey is Bailey. He's another competitor and strong, uh, strong, hard-working kid. And, uh, you know, he, he ran the ball a little bit and, and caught five or six balls, and he's, uh, he, he's a guy that we're going to try and find a way to get the ball any, many, as many ways as we can. Cool. Hey, Coach, uh, so this week you're off. You have an open Friday evening. Uh, tell us a little bit about your prep time this week, and then, uh, of course, you get really back to work next week for Breckenridge. But what, what kind of what's your kind of schedule? What do you guys do? You do anything out of the ordinary? Do you stick Do you stick pretty much to game plan? I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna pack up and go anywhere Friday evening. Uh, so give us a little bit about what your schedule for the open it'll, week. It'll be very similar to a game week. Uh, I guess in the fact of number of practices, we're going to practice, I guess, an extra day. We'll practice four days this week instead of three. Actually, four and a half. We'll practice a little bit during the period on Friday as well. Um, and we will uh, we'll lift a little more than usual. Um, we lift three times a week. We'll hit the weight room four times this week, uh, try and get a little bit stronger and uh, get all the soreness and bumps and bruises out of us. But um, And then when we're on the field, we'll spend a lot more time in individual than usual, um, working on uh, position-specific stuff, um, getting better at the little things instead of you know trying to get in a full week of prep for an opponent and going through schemes and what we're going to do to this and that, uh, just kind of 
step back a little bit, bit and look at the small things and, and see if we can't improve on the little things this week. Right. With the bye kind of kind of early, I mean, you've only really played two games. You don't, Do you have many bumps and bruises that need to kind of heal? No, actually, we're, we're pretty healthy right now. Um, nothing major right now and uh, probably still tired from – the 200 play <laughs> ball game yeah. last week so uh, pretty fortunate i guess of the timing of the bye week this year but right. uh, but no we're, we're pretty healthy right now okay let me ask one more question you come friday night where are you going to be friday night we're going to go watch breck and sweetwater breck and uh, sweetwater breck, since we got breck next week right? thanks coach watkins the mavericks have an open date this week you heard coach explain kind of what the schedule is this week for the mavs they will take on breckenridge next friday the Panthers, the Gorman Panthers, continue their winning ways this past Friday with a 64-12 drubbing of the Dallas Lutheran Lions. The game was called at the half due to the 45-point mercy rule. The Gorman Panthers were able to score more than 45 points than the Lions, and at halftime, the game was called. Flavio Herrera threw for three, four touchdowns. Trent Padron threw for two more touchdowns. Padron also had two carries for 84 yards. Let's see what Coach Williamson has to say. All right, Coach Williamson, thanks for taking your time out of this Labor Day to spend with us. Uh, first, uh, give us a little, kind of just a little update. How are you doing? We talked last week. I told the folks you'd had a little bit of an eye problem. Uh, tell us how you're doing, Coach. Uh, doing a lot better. Doing a lot better. Uh, of course, don't, not, don't get to wear my contacts for another week or so, but... Uh, my eyes doing a lot better. Thanks for asking. Well, good, good, Coach. Uh, you uh, uh, Gorman got their second victory, six man ball, uh, this last Friday evening. Uh, tell us uh, your impressions offensively. Obviously, had a wonderful game, able to forty five point rule Dallas Lutheran by halftime, uh, and defense only allowed a couple scores. Did it, give us your impressions, Coach, of your team. You know, going into the game, we were we were little uh, little worried about their speed. Uh, Dallas Lutheran has uh, was loaded with with speed. Uh, you know, defensively, we did a great job um, controlling that speed. Uh, the, the couple of scores came on a kickoff and a, and, and a long pass play uh, that we gave up. And uh, you know, most of the night, defensively, uh, we hit, we contained their speed, we held their speed, and uh, you know, it was proud for the boys in, in, in that situation. And uh, Coach Garrett did a great job, um, you know, defensively preparing for the game. Uh, offensively. Uh, they were, I don't want to say they were soft, but uh, we knew we'd be able to move the ball against them. And uh, the boys did a great job, uh, you know, during the week preparing for it. And uh, we, we were able to move the football and, and uh, put some points up on the board. Uh, all right, Coach, I noticed uh, from the stats that uh, both Flavio Herrera and Trent Padron had uh, a good game uh, from the quarterback position passing. Uh, that tandem, is that kind of what your uh, the, the plan is? Is that kind of how you're going to approach each game with those two fellas? Well, you know, uh, in my offense, uh, every, every, every one of them uh, contribute to what we do. Uh, you know, the more guys I have to be able to throw the football, uh, the more dangerous we, we can be. And, uh, yeah, I, I love the approach that we, we have with Trent and uh, Flavio. Uh, you know, giving those guys the option to, to throw the football and also run the football. Uh, it's going to make us, it's going to be able to open up the field more. And, uh, you know, they, they did a great job on Friday night doing that. Great. All right, Coach, it's homecoming here at Gorman this week. Uh, and you've got Katie uh, Faith West coming in what, way way down there from Houston. Uh, tell us a little bit of what, what you expect from Katie West, uh, Faith West, and how they may challenge you this Friday evening in your homecoming game. You know, uh, Coach Koch down there, I've, I've, I've known Coach Koch from my time down at High Island. And that's one of the reasons he's coming up. Uh, his coaching staff do, does a great job uh, year in, year out with those kids. They're very fundamentally sound. They're well-disciplined. Uh, Katie Faith has a <clears throat> tremendous running back um, that uh, I believe rushed for about 25, 2,600 yards last year. Uh, the young man can, uh, he's got breakaway speed. He's a uh, one cut back, and uh, you know you got to be able to contain him. And, and if not, they're going to put up some points. Uh, defensively, they tackle very well. They fly to the football. Uh, you know, I just uh, we're looking forward to uh, preparing for these guys. Uh, we're going to have to uh, stay with our blocks uh, going into the game. But you know, I, I look forward to being a um, a slugfest. I really do. Uh, Coach Koch and uh, Katie Faith West will come to the game well prepared. 
Thanks, Coach Williamson. Glad you're on the mend. The Panthers will take on Katie Faith West this Friday evening in Gorman at 7.30. It's homecoming in Gorman this Friday, so there will be lots of moms and lots of folks coming back to enjoy good Gorman Panther football. Let's now move on to the Ranger Bulldogs. The Ranger, the Bulldogs took it on the chin this past Friday when the Haskell a uh, Indians spoiled their home opener with a 50 to nothing shutout of the Bulldogs. In that game, Landon Wilkinson was able to rush for almost 80 yards and Christian Ulhorn hit two passes for 34 yards. Let's see what Coach Ramsey has to say. All right, Coach Ramsey, thanks for taking some time out of this Labor Day to spend with us today. Uh, you kind of kind of took it on the chin Friday night from the Haskell Indians. Uh, you've seen the film. Uh, give us your impression of how your team performed Friday evening. Uh, well, I mean, not up to, you know, what we was expecting out of them. We, you know, we had, we had some uh, some spots that wasn't so bright. And, uh, and on the flip side, Haskell is an extremely good football team. I knew, you know, when we scheduled them last year, uh, on the realignment that that there was going to be a pretty good football team, and I was hoping uh, the second year being this year would have a little better chance of you know competing with them pretty well. But uh, man, they just reloaded from last year. Uh, I think they got one sophomore on their on the varsity football team, uh, and at, at this level, if you've only got one sophomore and the rest are juniors and seniors, you got a chance to be pretty good. And, uh, and on the flip side, we're starting three or four freshmen, uh, you know, about three sophomores and. You know, a few juniors and seniors, two seniors to be exact, but um, but that's uh, kind of what we expected. Uh, we, we knew this was going to be good. Uh, we just hope we could slow them down a little bit, and we wasn't able to do that. Tell us a little bit about. I think uh, Landon had a, had a good game rushing. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, again your running game with, with Landon. Landon, uh, you know, he's he's a good little runner back. He's, uh, he's he's pretty natural at it. He's got a, a real good cut back. His vision's has been pretty good at times. Other times he's he, you know he'll he'll make a cut and you don't know what he's thinking, but uh, he, he is pretty slippery little running back. He rushed right at about 100 yards, had 16 carries, 17 carries, uh, and did pretty well. And I think he all-purpose yards with kickoff returns and so forth. His his around 150 yard you know total offense so for him total all-purpose yards. Uh, but you know the big thing is we wasn't able to get in the end zone, and that's what's aggravating. Right. All right, Coach, you uh, shared with me earlier a little change in, in, in this week's schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the change and, and what uh, and what you know about uh, the Brock JV team. Well, uh, three days before two days, uh, the, uh, the Highlands of Irving called and said that they were going to cancel our, our football game with us, which put us in a really bad spot. Um, you know, it, it's hard enough trying to find varsity football games as it is, and then, you know, two day, uh, three days before two days, somebody drops you it's pretty difficult so uh you know we scrambled around trying to find a game and uh uh you know chad over at brock you know he posted that they need a couple of jv games and that's really all all we could find and uh so we called chad over at brock and uh, we scheduled to, to play their jv here uh this this thursday at seven o'clock what do you do you know anything about uh, the brock jv i mean you, do you have video or do you know kind of what you're going up against now we they they film i mean they film the jv guys and uh, you know chad does a good job at brock as uh you know proof of what they've done you know in football so far but uh yeah we're pretty familiar I, i'm fairly familiar with what they do offensively and defensively with it being old salina stuff you know chad he worked at salina for a long time he he played high school pop point whenever I was in high school at Salina, and so we know each other. Uh, it being a Salina system, it's uh, we're very familiar, you know, with what they do. And he's got a few more wrinkles he's thrown in. Uh, Chad's a great coach, does a good job, and uh, uh, even though he's not going to be the one down there coaching them, you know, Thursday night it'll be his, you know, his assistants. But he does a great job getting his kids ready to play football. Thanks, Coach Ramsey. The Ranger Bulldogs, as he mentioned earlier, have a change in the schedule. They will actually play Brock, the Brock JV team this Friday evening in Ranger at 7 o'clock. So that is a change from the original schedule. They will play the, the Brock JV team this Friday at 7 o'clock. Our final stop today takes us to Rising Star, where the Wildcats were defeated by the May Tigers on Friday evening, 82-36. to Crispin Froze scored three touchdowns, one rushing and two receiving. 
He also had 123 yards through the air. Ben Boucher threw for 155 yards, while Zach Childers helped with uh, 72 yards, hitting six different receivers. Let's now see what Coach Callaway has to say. All right, Coach Callaway, thanks for taking some time out of this Labor Day holiday to spend with us. Uh, you said last week that uh, May Tigers were were still pretty good football team, and uh, you learned that on Friday night. Uh, tell us about what you saw from your vantage point, uh, the, what the Wildcats did, maybe what they didn't do. Well, I mean, we we come out early, we were executing well. Uh, biggest thing was is we knew we couldn't make any mistakes. And we did. We, we we had an interception return for a touchdown, an onside recovery that they, they kicked against us, and, and then we fumbled one time. And those are mistakes. We also had a few four and out, four four and outs, basically four and out situations. Um, but we didn't stop them. I mean, and, and that was the biggest thing going in. I knew we had to get stops uh, to help with momentum. I mean, the only time that they had a drive that stalled out was because of the halftime buzzer. Uh, we didn't we didn't tackle well. We were in spots uh, to, to make plays, and, and we just didn't make them. I mean, the kids. And it's a maturity thing. I mean, we still have some maturation going on. A lot of people see us and say they got six or seven seniors, but there's six or seven seniors that still need to mature. I mean, and that's why we play these preseason games. We took it on the chin, and, and we're going to move on from it and, and, and do the best we can as we move forward. It's no, but does not define our season at this point. We still got a long ways before our district uh, battles start, and, and it's, it's something we needed probably to help us understand, hey, we need to work a little harder. Were there any standouts uh, offensively that you, you saw maybe you didn't expect or, or, or just stepped up against the Tigers? No, I mean, I mean, we had some kid. We had we did some things. We got every time we got inside the ten, we scored, which was good. You know, we went into went from spread to tight, and, and were able to punch it in on the on the ground for the most part. Uh, I had Zach Childers throwing the ball a little bit more this week in some sets, and, and he did some great good things for us. But but all in all, I mean, we executed plays when we needed to, and we made mistakes when we didn't need to. So I mean, those are the things that that really kill a ball club. But like I said, we're going to take it on the chin and. And, and hopefully we're stronger because of it. Yes, sir. All right, so you've had a little bit of time to, to look at uh, Robert Lee, uh, the steers coming to Rising Star, I believe, this Friday evening. Uh, tell us a little bit about what how uh, Robert Lee will challenge your Wildcats this weekend. They got some speed. I mean, that's the biggest thing. They, they're, they're extremely fast. They got a spread back, and we saw him last year. He, he, I think he went to state track meet. I can't remember for sure, but he's he's a, he's got some wheels on him. So it's going to be – we're going to have to learn to contain him and do some things against him that, that – they're going to benefit our defense. Defensively is going to be the biggest battle for us. Offensively, last year we didn't we didn't do well against them. I think we put 16 points on the board, and they put 68 or something like that. So so we're going to have to really challenge ourselves to do better this week, uh, both offensively and defensively. If we can contain the contain their spread back, I think we'll be okay. But if he if he gets ahead of steam, it's hard to catch him. And I mean, it, it, angles are going to be really important this week. Um, they do some good stuff. I mean, I know they, they do a lot of no huddle attack. They always have since Coach Avance got there. He does some good things with them. So, so we're going to have to be prepared on defense. To, and really, the biggest thing, like I said, is going to be containment. Um, but we got to come out. We got to wake up this week, and we got to play well. Our goal is to compete, and that's that's what we've talked about before when you've come and talked to me. Is, is we want to compete in ball games, and if we don't compete, you know, that, then then what are we? What do we need to work on? So, I mean, we're going to try to bring our intensity up in practice this week. Uh, try to practice more live game type scenarios and, and try to get that situation where the guys are playing fast in practice too. Okay, Thanks, Coach. Coach Callaway. The Rising Star Wildcats will face off against the Robert Lee Steers in Rising Star this Friday evening at 7.30. Let's, for just a few moments, talk about other Eastland County sports news. The Cisco College Wranglers got their first victory of the year. The football team got their first victory in a non-conference matchup with the Arkansas Baptist College Buffaloes. They defeated the Buffaloes in Little Rock, 37-29. to Quarterback Richard Legault, completed 32 of 44 passes for 406 yards. Congratulations to Coach Dean and the Cisco College Wranglers. In volleyball news, we've got the Ranger Lady Bulldogs. They lost a heartbreaker to Holly last Tuesday in three games. The Eastland JV Lady Mavs participated in the Dublin JV Tournament this past weekend, and they came away with a second-place finish. Congratulations to the Lady Mav JV team. The varsity took on Gustine on Saturday and lost in three games. Coach Skinner continues to see improvement in her girls on the varsity level. 
The Cisco College Lady Wranglers defeated Richland College three games to zero last Tuesday. Over in Ranger, the Lady Bull, the Lady Rangers, excuse me, won two matches and lost two matches at the Temple College Tournament over the weekend. We've also got soccer in Eastland County, college soccer anyway. The Cisco Lady Wranglers defeated Northeast Texas Community College 2-1 to one last week. And then the uh, Lady Rangers and the Rangers both participated in the Crusader Cup tournament in Dallas this past weekend. The Lady Rangers won both their games, and the Rangers won one game and tied one game in that tournament. Both uh, the Cisco Lady Wranglers, uh, the Lady Rangers and Rangers will begin conference play very soon in the soccer season. For more summaries of all the games, pictures, football, volleyball, and uh, any other sports-related news, please pick up a copy of the Eastland County Today, uh, which comes out on Thursday. Pick that up at your local newsstand. This has been Stephen Forrester, your ECT Sports Editor uh, with the ECT Coaches Show. Have a wonderful week. Make some wonderful memories this weekend. God bless you, and have a good week.